What did you do now? Oh, okay. Shalom, everybody. Shalom. Shalom. Caught me talking to the camera guy. Amen. Well, uh, we're, we've got some visitors here with us tonight. My wife's already told, told, told her sister Harry's story, so I've got to tell my, my brother Lonnie's story because uh, we used to be in the old chain gang camp. I don't know. Did you guys ever go there when John was there? Uh oh, okay. We, we were at the old chain gang camp, and I don't remember if he was just testifying or if he was preaching. I mean, sometimes I believe he, he did a little of both, I mean, when he was up there. But I'll never forget because I was just a young man, and he was talking about young men coming on the job. And he said that they start the job, and after they worked a couple of days, they want to be the foreman. But what he was talking about was these people that are coming in church and how a young man starts getting an idea in his mind that he wants in the ministry. That young man starts desiring to be able to get up behind the pulpit. And, you know, when we went to his funeral, that's what I was thinking about. Who's going to stand up? This generation, we lost Brother John years ago. We lost Brother Ronald. We lost Brother Ricky now. My goodness. Brother Lonnie, who, who's going to fill the shoes of these men of God that have stood up over the years? Well, my wife's got an uncle pastor in two churches right now, one in Ohio and one in Pennsylvania. That means 84, I believe now, about 100 miles apart. Where's the young men that want to stand up and be for me? Amen. You're working for the Lord. It's not like I mean, you're trying to do anything on your own anyways. You, you get into the word and you bring forth the word and people don't want the responsibility. Somebody has to be the foreman. Yes. If not, all your workers are going to be all over the place. None of the measurements are going to be right. Amen. Nobody can read yes. blueprints. Nobody knows who is in charge. Somebody has got to be the foreman. Yes. We're not even going to talk about the superintendent and all that good stuff. We're going to go over to Numbers, but I, I, I've got, uh, of your dad, I've got nothing but good memories. He, he was a great man of God. He really influenced me when I was younger. Yeah, nothing but good memories. Numbers, the ninth chapter. And my voice is playing one of these squeaky moments, so if you would just bear with me. We're going to pick up with the 15th verse. Jonathan, I want you to go get me Hebrews, the fifth chapter, and hold on to that. I, I'm just a little bit different when I preach. I don't have a whole lot worth saying, so I, I use an awful lot of Scripture because that's all that really matters anyway. Everything else would just be my opinion. I've seen so many preachers over the years that would get up behind the pulpit and they could stand up there for an hour and a half, hour and 45 minutes and you know what they had for lunch, you know what they had for breakfast, you know what happened on their way to work last month, but you don't get the word of God out of what they're saying. I'm here to hear from Jesus. I'm not here to hear from Jason. Amen. Numbers, the ninth chapter, we're going to pick up in the 15th verse. And on the day that the tabernacle was reared up, the cloud covered the tabernacle, namely the tent of the testimony. And at even there was upon the tabernacle, as it were, the appearance of fire until the morning. So it was always the cloud covered it by day and the appearance of fire by night. And when the cloud was taken up from the tabernacle, then after that the children of Israel journeyed and in the place where the cloud abode, there the children of Israel pitched their tents. At the commandment of the Lord, the children of Israel journeyed, and at the commandment of the Lord, they pitched. As long as the cloud abode upon the tabernacle, they rested in their tents. And when the cloud tarried long upon the tabernacle, many days, then the children of Israel kept the charge of the Lord and journeyed not. And so it was when the cloud was a few days upon the tabernacle, according to the commandment of the Lord, they abode in their tents, and according to the commandment of the Lord, they journeyed. And so it was when the cloud abode from even unto the morning, that the cloud was taken up in the morning, then they journeyed, 
whether it was by day or by night that the cloud was taken up, they journeyed. And whether it were two days or a month or a year that the cloud tarried upon the tabernacle, remaining thereon, the children of Israel abode in their tents and journeyed not. But when it was taken up, they journeyed. At the commandment of the Lord, they rested in the tents. And at the commandment of the Lord, they journeyed. They kept the charge of the Lord at the commandment of the Lord by the hand of Moses. So what was going on at this time, what was going on is God showed Moses the pattern of the tabernacle that he was wanting built. You ever wonder where they get the linen and all the things that went into making the tabernacle? They were a bunch of slaves in Egypt. You wonder where they get that stuff? Think about it. Well, we've got a couple million people that just left Egypt with all of Egypt's gold and silver and they're traveling out into this wilderness. One thing that has never changed from the book of Genesis until today is greed. They saw the need and you got to believe they were out there and they had vendors for everything. They were out there and that somebody had that material to sell to the children of Israel. Somebody came out with everything they needed because that's the nature of man. Somebody's going to make a profit off of it. But God showed him the uh, tabernacle, the way he was wanting it built. So Moses, he, he gets the guy, I can't remember his name, but he was really good at uh, uh, construction there. And that they, they built the tabernacle up. And then the Spirit of the Lord comes down in the form of the cloud and it abides upon the tabernacle. And so long as that cloud was down there on the tabernacle, the Spirit of the Lord was there. But when the Spirit lifted, everybody gets together. They all have their jobs. Uh, well, let's go to the 10th chapter. 13 through 17. And they first took their journey according to the commandment of the Lord by the hand of Moses. In the first place went the standard of the camp of the children of Judah according to their armies. And over his host was Nashon, the son of Am Aminadab. That poor guy, that's a hard one to say. And over the host of the tribe of the children of I uh, Issachar was Nathaniel, the son of Zuar. And over the host of the tribe of uh, Zebulon was Eliab, the son of Elon, Finally, and the tabernacle was taken down and the sons of Gershon and the sons of Merirah, you'll forgive me for that, set forth bearing the tabernacle. Skip down to 21, and the Kohathites set forward bearing the sanctuary and the other did set up the tabernacle against they came. Skip down to 34, Uh, where are we at here? And the cloud of the Lord was upon them by day when they went out of the camp and it came to pass when the ark sat forward that Moses said, Rise up, Lord, let thine enemies be scattered and let them that hate thee flee from before thee. And when it rested, he said, Return, O Lord, unto the many thousands of Israel. So what was going on here is we had these different um, families of Levites that had the different responsibilities for the different articles that made up the tabernacle. It was elaborate. You look at the different panels of the curtains and then they had the different sections that built a fence that went out around it and then they had the brazen altar there and then you go into the Holy of Holies and you had the ark. Outside you had the candles. I mean, it was all, all of that had to be meticulously tore down yes. and not just anybody could touch it to move it. Right. Certain families had certain jobs to be able to do. But you better believe when they left, there wasn't a tent peg left behind. Right. Right. It was all picked up and it was all moved. Now the point I'm trying to get to tonight, and we will get there, if they would have just left the tabernacle there and moved off and just started building again, well, that's not what God told them to do. 
But they moved where the Spirit of God told them to move to. And when they got there, they reassembled everything and they had church yeah. of a form that they were supposed to have. The sacrifices would resume everything that they were supposed to do. But it was all moved from place to place. Yeah. But nothing was left behind. Jonathan. I know everybody's wondering what I'm talking about. Give me 5 and 11, the book of Hebrews, and read down through 6 and 3. Josiah, 2 Corinthians 12 and 1. Yes, sir. 5 and 11 through chapter 6, verse 3. Yes. Of whom, we have, uh, of whom we have many things to say, and hard to be uttered, seeing ye are dull of hearing. For when, for when for the time ye ought to be teachers, ye have me that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God. And are become such as have need of milk, and not of strong meat. For every one that uses milk, useth milk, is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith towards God, of the doctrine of baptisms and of laying on of hands and of resurrection of the dead and of eternal judgment. And this will we do if God permit. If God permit. Yeah. Okay, so what we have going on here back out in the wilderness is they, they take this tabernacle up, the foundation of their beliefs, and where their beliefs were put into practice and where the priests would go out and they would minister and they would do their job. They would take that tabernacle up and they would move it. Nothing got left behind. Do you know we're on a journey right now? Yes. yes. Do you know we don't know everything there is to know right now? Mm -hmm. Amen. Paul said we will move forward. Leaving these things behind, but he didn't mean that they were no longer important. Yeah. You go back there, Paul was a good apostolic. Yeah. When you read what Paul preached, he preached repentance. Yes. He preached baptism in the name of Jesus Christ. He preached the infilling of the Holy Ghost. Yes. And he preached holiness when you read what he wrote in his epistles. Those things didn't stay behind. They came with him everywhere he went. But when he went, what he was telling them, you need to be teaching these things and you need to be learning and stepping forward. Yes. Uh, Joe, I gave you 2 Corinthians yes, sir. 12 and 1. Uh, you got a Bible? Uh, 1 Corinthians 3rd chapter. Go ahead. 12 and 1. It is not expedient for me, doubtless to glory. I will come to visions and revelations. I will come to visions and revelations. Go ahead. Of the Lord. Of the Lord. Paul says, even I don't know it all yet. But I'm not leaving my foundation back there. I'm not leaving the tabernacle hanging out and go build a new church. I am going to take the revelation that God gave me and I am going to continue to build upon the foundation yes. that God has given us. What did Peter preach on the day of Pentecost? What is Romans 10? I believe it's verse 17. Their sound went out into all the earth. The gospel went out. They all preached the same thing when they took it. But this one has revelation. This one has revelation. You don't leave your foundation behind just because you get a revelation. Amen. What happens if somebody gets a revelation now? We get a new denomination. Yep. That's what happens. Sometimes it's good. Sometimes it's not so good. Sometimes people have forgotten all about their foundation. Sometimes people forget what was uh, Robbie Zacharias. He had uh, Kingdom of the Cults was the name of the book he put out. And I think the saddest day for the Church of God in Cleveland, Tennessee was the day that they got taken out of his book because they got so dead they didn't fit in there anymore. Sometimes you've got to leave it behind. There's 
people right now that are making the exit out of the UPCI because they're getting rotten to the core. Yeah. They're going in there and they're preaching their holidays. We were uh, fellowshipping with a guy. He had a storefront church trying to get it going here in Gaffney. UPC, but he was a good man. Yes. Amen. What I couldn't stomach was driving by that little storefront church and seeing his Christ mass tree all lit up. Amen. You know, my Bible tells me to not plant a grove by the altar. We don't have these things in the church. We shouldn't have these things in our homes. This is the difference. We, we have stepped out of Babylon and we are going to the new Jerusalem. But the problem is all the traditions of Babylon, everything that they held on to with the Roman Catholic Church, this was all in existence before Christ walked on the earth in the flesh. It was already in existence. Their holidays are not something that's come to be in the last 2,000 years. Their Christmas trees, their Easter eggs, every bit of it didn't come out of the Bible. Came out of Babylon. Yes. Came out of Nimrod. Came out of Semiramis. Came out of Tammuz. We were talking about this uh, last night during Bible study. <laughs> they had the 40 days of Lent, all the, the, the Roman Catholic churches and the Roman Protestant churches. They had their 40 days of Lent. And then they celebrate the end of that with their Ishtar Sunday and they eat a dead pig. And they're trying to tell me that they're eating a dead pig to celebrate a Jewish guy getting up out of the ground. That's an abomination to the Jewish guy. Yeah. Yeah. But Tammuz was killed by a wild boar and in his religion they would have that 40 days of fasting and weeping for Tammuz and then they would sacrifice that pig and then they would eat the pig Well, let's just blend that in with the, the, the Ishtar story there. and Let's say that Ishtar really has something to do with Jesus. When it doesn't, he was resurrected. He was resurrected. He, he was killed on Passover. Why can't we just say Passover? Yes. Amen. What's so hard about that? And I, I'm getting off my foundation for the message today. But... That when I was young in high school, they had a song that was real popular by the CNC Music Factory. Things that make you go, hmm. That's where I'm at with a lot of this stuff because if you leave this and try to call this Christianity and you leave it in the body, it's, hmm. It just doesn't make any sense. But if you understand where it came from. If you understand that when Nimrod rose up, when Babylon rose up, then God brought forth Abraham and his seed, and they've been doing battle ever since. Yes. Amen. Nimrod is Baal. Baal was being worshipped in the ten northern tribes. They started worshipping Baal in the two southern tribes. God sent them to Babylon. The ten northern tribes he sent off to the scattered on the face of the earth. They've been doing battle. You've got God's ways and you've got Satan's ways. Amen. And it's been a battle and it will be a battle until we get to the end. But God is bringing us further. Yes. Amen. God is bringing us revelation and showing us things. That there's people that I, I used to be affiliated with that think I lost my mind because we went to tabernacles. Well, you're trying to be Jewish now. No. <laughs> no, I'm not. I am celebrating the prophetic in the Feast of Tabernacles. The book of Revelation says, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. You want to know what I'm celebrating? Yeah. That battle that I just told you is coming to an end. Yeah. I'm celebrating the day that it's yeah. over with. Yeah. I'm celebrating the day the Messiah has come back yeah. and all this gets put to an end. Amen. We don't know what peace is. Amen. We don't know what peace is. Amen. 1 Corinthians, 3rd chapter, 
9 through 11. You get me Ephesians, the second chapter, and go ahead and read that, 9 through 11. For we are laborers together with God. Ye are God's husbandry. Ye are God's building. According to the grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and another man buildeth thereon. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. For other foundation can no man lay than that it is laid, than that it is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Which is Jesus Christ. And that was 12, but I told you 11, but I wanted verse 12 anyway. You want 12? Yeah. Now if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest. Okay, that, that, that's good. But the point that I am getting at is we have our foundation. We have been baptized into Christ. We have been baptized into that one body. We have been filled with his spirit and we have to be careful to not get knocked off the foundation that we are standing on. We have to go forward. We have to grow as the body of Christ. But we have to be careful to not do away with what we know. Yes. Yes. Amen. Do you understand what I'm saying tonight? There's more that we need in our revelation, but we need to hold on to these things. We Amen. can't let them go. You know what? It seems like in our group that we were uh, once with, it seems like after a couple generations, they'll stay in church, but all of a sudden the Christmas tree is an abomination anymore. It seems like, well, maybe it's okay to, well, maybe celebrate Easter, but uh, we just won't have eggs or anything because that's a fertility symbol. Within a couple generations... Yeah. And they're always preaching revelation. And I'm not talking against the ministry. But what's going on is when they start seeking for revelation and they start leaving alone what they had already established, yeah. then the people are getting knocked off their foundation yeah. and they're losing their salvation and they're getting a hold of the Babylonian church. Amen. Yep. Happy Ishtar from the plains of Shinar. There's more churches out there tonight that that is true in. And it breaks my heart to see people that have the knowledge of the oneness of the Godhead. Yes. They have the knowledge. But they don't really understand it anymore. Why is it so bad to maybe fellowship with this uh, Assemblies of God church? Because you, I mean, they believe in Jesus just like we do. They start slipping. They start sliding. They start leaving off that foundation. They start accepting things that would make their elders roll over in their grave. But we've got to stay on the foundation as we grow. When you're building uh, Amos the seventh chapter... Amos said, I saw the Lord stand on a wall and the wall was made with a plumb line. When you take that plumb line, gravity is going to make that line straight. And you can build that wall straight up. Well, what happens if you're not using a plumb line? Don't be on the wrong side of the wall when it falls is all I can tell you. Because it's going to tumble over. We've got to take this word and we've got to stay in this word and not build on the traditions of man, but build on the plumb line of God. We have to build up. We have to. We cannot stay where we are and look God in the face on judgment day and say, well, God, I kept my talent hid away. No. I knew you was an austere man, reaping where you haven't sowed. So I took that talent and I hid it away. We've got to go. Amen. 
We've got to go. And it is a daring thing. People think I'm crazy. People already thought I was crazy. I didn't lose anything. <laughs> We've got to build up. Amen. We have got to be the people God wants us to be. Yes. We have got to build up and we have got to build straight. Amen. What Dean was just reading back there, what Paul was saying, if you go out there and you build on this foundation, wood, hay, stubble, you're going to get burned. Amen. You might not lose your salvation, but you're going to lose your reward because your work will not stand. Yes. Amen. Take care and build with knowledge. Uh, Ephesians, so, Michaela, you want to go get me First Peter, the second chapter. Ephesians, the second chapter. Give me verses twenty through twenty-two. And are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Okay. Jesus Christ being him, himself being the chief cornerstone. Yes. And whom all the building fitly framed together. Fitly framed together. It's perfect. It is a perfect building. Groweth unto an holy temple in the Lord. Uh huh. And whom ye, ye also are builded together. For a habitation of God through the Spirit. For a habitation of God through the Spirit. We're building on this foundation that God has given us. We've got the words of the apostles. We've got the words of the prophets. Yes. We've got the words of the Messiah himself as the chief cornerstone. Yes. We've got to be careful how we build. We've got to keep it straight. We've got to keep it true. Yes. But we've got to build or we're not doing our job. Yes. People don't read the Bible anymore. People don't study. People don't look at it and say, hmm, what's that word mean? Amen. Preacher will tell me. That's not the way it's supposed to be. You're supposed to dig in it for yourself. What happens if that preacher falls over and you're the only man God can call on to stand up? Yeah. Amen. What happens? Get it in your heart. Yeah. Amen. 1 Peter 4. Uh, Josiah. Yes, sir. Get me uh, 1 Corinthians 2 and 2. Dean, get me Acts 3rd chapter. 26 verse. Get me Romans 6, 3 and 4. And I better dig out my pen or I'm going to forget who I gave what or where I am. What verses? Uh, give me verses 4 and 5. Wherein they think it strange that ye run not with them to the same excess of riot, speaking evil of you. Who shall give account to him that is ready to judge the quick and the dead? Is that 1 Peter? Yeah. 1 Peter 4, 4 and 5. Uh-oh, what did I do? I did something, bear with me. <laughs> No, uh, chapter 2. Yeah, yeah. That's what it was. Chapter 2, verses 4 and 5. I'm sorry. Blame it on the blind guy. <laughs> to whom to who coming as unto a living stone disallowed and beat of men, the uh -huh. chosen of God and precious. Ye also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer a spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Okay, we're, we're built up again. Everywhere you read in the Bible, it's not about sitting down. Right. Even when the tabernacle was pitched out in the wilderness, they knew that tabernacle was going to move. They knew they were going to have to rebuild that thing again. This thing is full of action verbs. Yes. Yes. Amen. It's yeah. not a faith where you get the Holy Ghost and you sit on your laurels and wait for the trumpet to sound. No. Yeah. It is a faith where we build, where we move, where we draw closer to God. James said if we draw nigh unto God, He will draw nigh unto us. We move closer. We get yeah. closer and closer. And we get revelation because God will give it to us. And we get understanding. But we have to be wise in our building. And we have to watch how we are building and make yeah. sure we're using the proper tools. Yeah. All it takes is a lazy day. 
could all fall over. Joe, if you don't have your plumb line out there, that one block is just out a little bit too far. Maybe that mortar's not tempered right. Amen. One mistake. One mistake. And it doesn't mean you're a lazy bum or anything else. It means maybe Michaela said something mean to you. And your mind just wasn't where it was supposed to be. Amen. Your mind has to be where it's supposed to be. Yeah. We've got to build and we've got to build true. We've got people right now looking to us. We've got people that see, well, these people have something different. There's something different in their doctrine. There's something different in their lives. Amen. You've got people watching you wherever you go, whatever you're doing, and they're going to watch how straight you build. Yes, that's right. They're going to watch if you say, well, you know what? I don't want that Christmas tree in my house. Well, they're going to see the reef. People go preach against Christmas and then they'll go someplace else where someone's family celebrates it and spend the time with... No, there's a word for that. It's called hypocrisy. <laughs> Read the Gospels. There's one thing that would make Jesus angry and angry fast. Amen. <laughs> hypocrisy yes. that's the world because they've never bothered to read the book the world thinks well you know that's not very Christ like of you to raise your voice like that that's not very Christ like have you even read the book <laughs> you generation of vipers yes. oh Amen. that's really Christ Jesus that's not very Christ like <laughs> Oh my goodness. Don't try to beat me over the head with a book if you haven't read it. Amen. Amen. The, the, it was written by men and not college educated men. It was written by a bunch of dumb fishermen in the New Testament, yeah. except for the Apostle Paul. He was the only great scholar out of the bunch of them. And that's who God called to follow him around on earth. And that's who he called to go out there. The temple was full of learned people. Yes, yes. Some of them were good people. Nicodemus was part of the Sanhedrin. And he goes to Jesus trying to understand. Yes. Jesus called a fisherman. Amen. Jesus called a tax collector. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Love that one. Yeah, yeah. Jesus called a tax collector. Amen. So, if we're building up here and we're, we're grabbing a hold of the lower levels, you guys ever play Jenga? If you're grabbing a hold of the lower levels and pulling out and putting it back on top, sooner or later, what's going to happen to your Jenga tower? And it's going to fall over. As we build these things, we have to build these things Straight. We have to build these things true. First Corinthians 2 and 2. I gave it to somebody. I don't know who. I didn't purposely rhyme it. For I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified. Politics is going to cause you so much trouble. Amen. Paul told Timothy, 1 Timothy 2nd chapter, I believe it was, no man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life. Amen. Do you know why Joe Biden's in Washington, D.C. right now? God put him there. Because God put him there. Amen. I raise up kings. I raise up. Yes. Yes, exactly. Do I like it? No. I like to eat, and I got a feeling he's going to make that very difficult here very shortly. God has these things under control. I promise you, if I fall over right now and die right here in front of everybody, God is not going to say, I can't believe that happened. Now what am I going to do without Jason? He gave me my job to do. Amen. And it's not to worry about who's sitting in the White House. It's not to worry about which rapper made this one mad and whoever 
Is it Kane or Cayenne or Kanye? Kanye. It's all over the news now. He said something anti-Semitic. It's none of my business. My business is this book. My business is the God who directed the writing of this book. Amen. Yes, I am really that out of touch with the, the culture around here. And I'm proud of it. Thank you. Amen. 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 Acts 3.26. Unto you first God, having raised up his son Jesus, sent him to bless you, and turning away every one of you from his iniquities. Repentance, moving forward, going with the gospel, Romans 6, 3 and 4. Uh, Joe, did I give you Romans 8? Uh, right. I'll give you Romans 8 now. Go ahead. No, you not. That's so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ, were baptized into his death. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. Now what are these? These are foundational doctrines. Yes. This is what we are built upon. These are the things we have to know and to bring with us. Yes. We have to know these things. We have to understand. We've got to know where to find it if somebody wants to argue with us because you have to know how to give an answer yes. if they ask about the hope that is within you. Yes. Amen. Amen. If not, you're letting the Apostle Peter down. Amen. Uh, Romans 8, 9 through 13. Yes, sir. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin. But the Spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the Spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live after the flesh. For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the body do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. That, that's good. That, that, these are foundational doctrines. This is what we should be taught from our childhood if we've came up in this. These are things we should know and not forget. Yes. If you remember a scripture, it should be a new scripture. It should be something that you are moving forward yes. into. If you're learning something new, it should be a revelation. But we're building this thing up. Yes. We're not building it over. We're not going to go build on somebody else's foundation. We are going to build on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, yeah. Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Yeah. We have to stay in line with this. We have to remember. Yeah. Or we're going to lose it all. Do we want this to be the generation where the true church just collapses and goes away? No. Do you think the devil's angry because these social clubs are out there having ice cream socials and not saving anybody? No. You go out there with hellfire and brimstone and start preaching repentance, the devil's going to take yes. notice. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Just repeat after me and give me your $20 and you're saved. <laughs> That's... You're going to hell. <laughs> we laugh, but it's sad. I've talked to people, Baptist churches in this area, that run your credit report to tell you where you're going to sit yeah. in their monstrosity of a church. I've heard the same thing in Johnson City, Tennessee. They run your credit report to decide where you're going to sit. <sighs> Generation of vipers. Amen. They care more just like the, the Pharisees, just like the Sadducees, when Jesus is rebuking them because he said, you're saying it's more important to swear by the gold on the temple than it is to swear by the altar or the gift on the altar. They're a bunch of stinking hypocrites.
hypocrites. All they know is money. They turned the church and the living God into a bank. Which, if you really research it and really want to know, it's the Babylonian banking system. No, I'm not kidding. Jeremiah, the third chapter. Let's see, I better throw out the next one here. Jonathan, go get me Ephesians, the fourth chapter. We've got some more scripture, and then I'm going to wind this up for you. I think you get the point tonight. We're going to pick up. I lost my place. Twelfth verse. Go and proclaim these words toward the north and say, Return, thou backsliding Israel, saith the Lord, and I will not cause mine anger to fall upon you, for I am merciful, saith the Lord, and I will not keep anger forever. Only acknowledge thine iniquity, that thou hast transgressed against the Lord thy God and hast scattered thy ways to the strangers under every green tree, and ye have not obeyed my voice, saith the Lord. Turn, O thou backsliding children, saith the Lord, for I am married unto you, and I will take you, one of a city, and two of a family, and I will bring you to Zion. You've got to love this next verse. And I will give you pastors according to mine heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. That's what God wants us to have. Yes. He's not digging into the colleges to get somebody with a doctorate and putting him out there. He wants somebody that is going to feed you with knowledge and with understanding. Yes. God knows what he is doing if we just do it his way. Sometimes we don't get it. Sometimes we don't understand it. Sometimes things don't go according to our plan. I'm a West Virginia boy. What am I doing in South Carolina? God's plan. God's plan. Okay, so he's going to give you pastors and they're going to feed you with knowledge and understanding. Ephesians 4, give me verses 9 through 13. Josiah, have I given you a scripture? Uh, I think I'm empty. Okay, give me Ephesians, the fifth chapter. Dean, give me Galatians, the fourth chapter. Michaela, give me Revelation, the 19th chapter. Go ahead. Now that he ascended... What is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? Okay. He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens, that he might fill all things. And he gave some apostles. Okay, I'm, I'm sorry, Jonathan. Back up, read verse 8. I missed it. Wherefore he saith, when he ascended... Up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Okay, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. And then Paul says, I have something to add to this thought, but I have something else I want to say. So I'm going to put this in parentheses because I'm not through with this thought. So we need to know that he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. And now he's going to go off onto a sidebar here for just a minute before he brings us back around. Now go ahead. Now that he ascended, what is it for that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens, that he might fill all things. Keep going. And he gave some apostles. Okay. He led captivity captive and he gave gifts unto men. We have just come out. We've gone around Paul's sidebar. Now we're coming into these gifts that Jesus has given to men. He gave some apostles. Amen. Yes. Go ahead. And some prophets. And some evangelists. And some pastors and teachers. And some teachers. Okay, this is what we refer to as the five-fold ministry. Yeah. Apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers. And they have a purpose. Yes. 
For the perfecting of the saints. For the perfecting of the saints. Do you know what is going on in the apostolic church right now? They've taken an axe and they have cut off the rest of the fingers and they left the one that's pointing to you saying you better get right. Well, you better get right. But there's more than just a pastor that's in the ministry. Yes. Amen. Why isn't the apostolic church perfected? Why haven't we yes. gone on? Why haven't we grown? Yes. 1906, the Azusa Street Revival. William Seymour, a black guy whose parents had been slaves, had been set free, and it started with a prayer meeting. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost began falling on those people. About, I'm thinking about 10 years later, right around 1916, we had a group of people coming together saying, hey, wait a second. Nobody was ever baptized in Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Wait a second. The Bible says there's one God. Yes, yes. Amen. Revelation. Yes. Revelation. Revelation. It came. And then they built into the organization. And the organizations joined. And then you've got outliers. The revelation stopped. Yeah. They sat on their laurels. Look what we did for God. What's this generation going to do for God? Amen. That's right. We can't hang our hats on their revelation. It's great, but it's been revelation and it has been established and it has been studied and it has become foundational doctrines. Yes. Yes. We need to seek God for our own revelation. Yes. Yes. Amen. Amen. Go on. For the work of the ministry and for the edifying of the body of Christ. For the work of the ministry and for the edifying of the body of Christ. I, I, honestly, I am flattered because you guys always look at me like I'm crazy when I say you're supposed to hear more than just me. I, I am flattered when you guys don't look at me like you know what I'm even talking about. But I'm not that interesting. I'm not that great. There's supposed to be more up here yes. than just me. Yes. The idea of having a pastor and nothing else in the church is not this. It's Roman Catholicism. Yes. It's the parish priest. There's supposed to be a ministry that is working together to build the church, Amen. to edify the body, yes. to bring about the perfecting of the saints. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We've got to build that tabernacle on this revelation where God is sitting. Yes. We have got to have the five-fold ministry come back. Amen. Yes. What, what's going on? Ephesians, 5th chapter, 25 through 27. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it mm -hmm. with the washing of water by the word. By the word. That he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle, not or such thing. Not having spot or wrinkle. Amen. Well, okay, Amen. we can look at that when you say, well, maybe that's just taking a little bit out of context there, brother. I mean, no spot or wrinkle. How are you going to do that? Michaela, Revelation 19, verse 7. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife hath made herself ready. His wife hath made herself ready. Yes. Amen. His wife got into the word. Yes. His wife started following the ministry. Yes. His wife started reading and started seeking after counsel. God, how would you have us to move? How would you have us to do? How do we proceed from here? God, if I do it on my own, I'm going to mess it up. But I know that I can look to you. I know that you will lead me and you will guide me into all truth. Lord God, I trust you. Amen. Esther, she was just a young virgin that was brought in to the courts of King Ahasuerus. And 
and she didn't know anything. She'd never known a man or anything. And well, they, they do all the bathing and everything and all the scented oils and stuff. They, they, they get her all fixed up nice, but then it comes for her night to be going in there with the king. And she knew she didn't do anything. She knew that she was just a young woman that oh, this is all new to me. And she goes to the chief eunuch over all of it, Haggai, and she says, Haggai, you tell me what to take in there. You tell me how to go in there and to please this king. And she was the queen later. Yes, hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Yes. Haggai is a type of the Holy Ghost. When we look to God, when we say, God, if you lead me, I'll do it. But it's going to have to be your revelation. It is going to have to be the walk that you have for me to take. Amen. Yes. Because I'm dumb. Amen. Amen. I'm just a human. I don't know how to please God. God is a spirit, and they that worship him in spirit and must worship him in spirit and in truth. What's that even mean, God? Because I'm, I'm carnal. I'm wrapped in flesh. Seek God. Seek God for your place. Seek God for your revelation. Seek God for what he would have you to do. Amen. Uh, Hebrews, the 11th chapter, we're about through. Give me Galatians, the third chapter. Uh, Michaela, get me Mark, the fourth chapter. We're over in Hebrews, the 11th chapter, but I'm not. I told you I wasn't too smart. Hebrews 11, verse 35. Women received their dead, raised to life again, and others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they might obtain a better resurrection. And others had trial of cruel mockings and scourgings, yea, moreover, of bonds and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sawn asunder, were tempted, were slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and in mountains and in dens and in caves, all of these having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise. We're talking about Old Testament saints. This is where we are bringing it into right now. God having provided some better thing for us, that they, without us, should not be made perfect. This dispensation of time, it is our revelation given to us by our Father. Yes. They went as far as they could and they were faithful in everything that they had. Yes. But the Holy Ghost was around them. Yes. God gave us the gift of the Holy Ghost dwelling inside of us. Yes. He gave us the ability to be able to fast and pray and to push this flesh down to where it doesn't resist Him so much. Amen. He gave us the greatest yes. gift. Amen. What's the church going to do with it? Amen. She has made herself ready. Yes. Read the book. Uh, Michaela, Mark 4. Uh, hold on. I gave somebody else Galatians. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, oh, I gave it to both of you? Okay, he's pointing to you. Uh, 28 through 29. I'll fall back on I told you I wasn't too bright. Galatians 3, 28 29. There is neither Jew nor Greek. Mm -hmm. There is neither bond nor free. Amen. There is neither male nor female. Free all are all one in Christ Jesus. And if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise? We have become the seed of Abraham. The battle has come to us. 
when we are battling Babylon, when we are battling these abominable holidays that they try to blame on Jesus, when we blame their abominable doctrines that they try to bring in, when they say, just say the Lord's Prayer and everything will be okay. He remembers your flesh that you're just dust. Yes, he does. Now stand up. Yep. People use these things as crutches to go about and do whatever they want to do to live according to the flesh. He didn't call us to live according to the yes. flesh. Amen. Amen. That's, right. That's right. He called us to walk in the Spirit. Amen. 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 Michaela, Mark 4, give me verses 28 and 29. For the earth bringeth forth fruit of herself, first the blade, then the ear, after that the full corn in the ear. But when the fruit is brought forth, immediately he putteth in the sickle, because the harvest is come. The church, from the day of Pentecost, has been building upon itself. You first you had the, the stalk, and then you have the ear, and it, it's just coming out little by little, and then it starts getting some fruit on the top of it. And you start looking, but the fruit is not ready to harvest yet. Because he's looking for a church, he's looking for a time, he's looking for a people that is going to seek after him, that is willing to do what he wants them to do. And the key word here is mature. He is looking for a people to mature in him. And when that grain is mature, the harvest will come. Yes. People say Jesus could return at any second. Well, I'll tell you one place where I don't see the signs, and that's the church. Amen. I see a divided mess. Amen. Amen. We'll end off there. Thank God for the tabernacle of witness. Thank God for the revelation that he gives the church. Amen. Amen.